Welcome to Lesson 28 of the Mountain Maidu Language Class. Today we're going to learn about saying prayers in Maidu. But before we get to that, we're going to learn to invent new words by repurposing old words. In our lesson so far, we've been inventing new words by using genuine Maidu parts, which are technically called morphemes. We can probably get most of the missing words using those methods, but in this lesson, we're going to switch over to another way to invent new words, repurposing old words. Please turn to Lesson 7, page 130 in the Modern Maidu Workbook. Let's look at a couple of examples in English, how old words were, re were repurposed for new technology. The English word oven came from a word for cooking pot thousands of years ago. The word nail, meaning the thing you hammer, came from the word for claw. So when new technology came along, they stretched the meaning of a word they already had to include the new meaning. Since contact with the settlers, Maidu has already repurposed existing words to apply to new items. Maidu already had snowshoes called chuwa. This word has been extended to mean skis. Maidu already had money in the form of clamshells called liani. This word has been extended to mean the money we use today. Maidu already had containers in the form of baskets. A flat basket called wata came to mean plate. A regular container basket called lolo came to mean cup or bowl. Maidu already had bows for hunting called pandaka. This word's been extended to mean rifle. The old meaning is still around. The word just gets stretched to include new meanings. Turn to page 131. A word root that used to be so common in Maidu was look, meaning crawl or climb. The verb look was used extensively to refer to entering and exiting a traditional bark house. The bark house typically had two entrances, one being a side door that people crawled in and out of, and the other being the smoke hole, which involved climbing in and out on a ladder. Although the verb root's main meaning is crawl or climb, it was extended to mean entering and exiting a building in general. Here are some examples from Tom Young showing that the verb root look also meant come or go out, looks it. Mukite looks it ti menkan. He never let his child go outside. Muim ekau chetipem kelechom looks it bodukum. Anoye menkum kelechom looks it waten yak menochoya. Those two beautiful women who hardly ever got out of the house, looks at Bodukum, who never traveled around. After they came out of the house, they took the canoe along. In addition, the verb lukta, ride a horse, originally meant climb on top. We can stretch the meaning from riding a horse to riding something you climb on on top of, like a motorcycle, bicycle, or a ride at the amusement park. If lukta means ride a motorcycle, how would you say motorcycle using the noun suffix you have already learned? Luktaka, what you ride on top of, or lukta tika, what makes you ride on top? Look at the chart under 7a. 
repurposing look words. I think any native mighty speaker would be able to understand what, what you meant by these, both nouns and verbs. Let's try the sixth one down together. Yeah, we go out together, my pay ya hotum, esan udom ya maka. Look sit moto. Esan udom lets the two of us go out together, way maka. Look sit moto pe there are some other fun ones here for you to try on your own and a dialogue at the bottom of the page. Let's go to the next page, page 132, repurposing tracking words. There are many mighty words for tracking. Most of them are based on a ha or he root. Some of them can also be found in the dictionary under pa or pi, the object prefix meaning footprint. It would be a shame to let all these good words go to waste, even though people don't track animals or people using footprints much anymore. These days, though, we do keep track of people and information in other ways. In this chart, if we want to make up a word that's in the first column, new word needed, we can use the tracking word in the second column. Then we can add an infix or suffix suggested in the third column. If that column has a dash, it means you don't have to add anything. The first one is done for us. Yeah, we track around maipe, kupenka and kes. Pahano ye, bebomweb, pahano ye. Weye, Google something ma, search online ma, maipe ya harum, esan udom ya maka. Pahanoye, same verb. You can also use tracking words for following somebody on social media or stalking. Try some of these out and the dialogue on the top of the next page. On page 133 to 4, 7C, we have traditional containers like baskets of various kinds in column 3. You can use these and stretch their meanings into other types of containers. To make the meaning extra clear, you can add words from column two. For example, the first one. Take the word for a huge watertight basket, kokpa. To turn this into bathtub, add the adjective pietom in front of it. Pietom kokpa, a bathing basket or bathtub. To make a kokpa into a sink, add ma chukutkum, hand washing, in front of it. Ma chukutkum kokpa, a hand washing watertight basket. I think you would be understood that you're referring to a sink. The fourth one down, using the word for metal, mildam, in front of kokpa. Mildam kokpa makes it a bucket or pail. Although these days you might even say pilasticum kokpa, a plastic bucket. What about a mildang lolo? A tin can, a metal can. Go through the rest of these containers on page 133 and 134 and have have some fun adapting old words to new meanings and learning a silly dialogue. Now let's go to page 135, keeping track of time. In former days, knotted strings were used to send out invitations to people living at a distance. A buckskin string would be tied with one knot for each day until the designated event day. Then a runner would carry the knotted strings out to everybody who was invited. The invitees would untie one knot every day until all the knots were untied. Then they would show up at the event. Pun means tie a knot. This could be stretched to mean set up an appointment or date. Bebamwayap, pun. 
Pum pem means knotted, like a string with knots. This could be stretched to mean scheduled or appointment. You can set up your appointments on your smartphone. Bebum wayap. Kaankano minki punpe minki hu kespem pondi punmapem. Minky who kes pem pondi on your smartphone. Then there, there's the punya pem walasi, the knotted buckskin string itself. This could be stretched to mean calendar. Bebum wea punya pem walasi. On page 135 to 136, you can practice repurposing miscellaneous words. In the first set, under 7D, the new word in column 3 will be exactly like the original word in column 2. For example, the first one, the traditional word for bake is lut, meaning bake in ashes. You can use that same word lut to mean bake in a modern oven. Let's go to the sixth one down. Say you needed a word for layer, coating, or a, a coat of paint. Ya we layer my peyaharom, hesaru dom yamaka. We can use the word for thin bark, kapumi, bebamoya, kapumi. Turn to the next page, first one. Say we needed a word for foil or plastic wrap whatever you use to wrap up food. You can use dapi or dapim, boto, maple leaf, what was traditionally used to wrap food up. Bebum weap, dapi. There are some fun ones in here, like the next to the last one. Try to pick up or snag someone that you're attracted to. There's a word for go courting, yilakoi, it's actually related to words for grab. Bebum web, yilakoi. Snag or pick up somebody. Section 7E on page 136 shows how you can add another word or several words to make it really clear what you mean. For example, third one down. Way a swimsuit might pay a harom, hesanudom yamaka. You could take the word we have for loincloth or the woman's bark apron, wosota, and then add a word that shows this is for swimming. Pietom wosota. Bebamoya, pietom wosota. On the next page, third from the top, say you wanted to say electric wire. You could use the word for string, kuku, but how would you distinguish it from regular string? Uh -huh, kupem kuku, power having string. The point in all of these is to be understood by other mighty speakers with your new word. This could be a fun activity in your mighty classes. Try to get your fellow students to figure out what your new word means. Section 7F is about adding infixes and endings to your repurposed words to make even more words. I think you already know how to do this, so it's just a matter of going through, through these and practicing. On page 139 is a fun dialogue for you about a father and son or daughter who have different ideas of what kind of calendar is best, paper or electronic. Page 140, section 7G is colors. I know some of you have been disturbed about missing colors ever since lesson four when we discussed this. Now you can get some of those missing colors by adding yak cheti pem, which looks like after the flower or fruit of that color. For example, the second one down, purple. You could say, which looks like grapes, pimali, Yakchetipem. Bebamoya. Pimli. Yakchetipem.
Finally, turn to page 142, Medicines. You might like this page, which has some of the traditional medicines used by Maidu people. I got these out of books, so please don't blame me if they don't work, especially the contraceptive one. I'm just the messenger. I think some of you may know more about this and even have other ones to add. The point is, you can use the traditional medicine word for the modern medicine. After reading through the list on page 142, try to do the exercise on page 143, giving the mighty word for each modern day medicine. Now we're going to talk about mighty prayers. What is a prayer? Some people would say that a prayer is talking to God. We're going to expand that meaning for mighty prayers. Mighty prayers are asking for something from a non-human entity. To me, there are two kinds of Maidu prayers, simple and complex, which I'll go over in a minute. But first, let's talk about what are some differences between Maidu prayers and Christian prayers. Christian prayers are always directed to God or Jesus. Maidu prayers are usually directed to the land or the world or to other entities. I don't have any examples of prayers that are directed to world maker. But then again, I only have a few written or recorded examples of prayers. So I'm working with this limited information. So you have to take that with a grain of salt that I don't have all the prayers. Christian prayers contain thank you. Complex Maidu prayers contain acknowledgments that show gratitude. Christian prayers contain please. Complex mighty prayers contain the word kaikas, respectfully request or propose. Christian prayers end in amen. Complex mighty prayers end in heuanai or heuaten. So let's talk about simple prayers first. What I'm going to call simple prayers are really the everyday conversations with nature around us. Maidu culture, like most Native American cultures, is one of getting permission. You ask for permission, you don't just take. This has been one of the biggest culture clashes between the Native people and the settlers who came in. The settlers did not believe in asking for permission. A simple everyday prayer might be to a berry bush asking permission to take some of the berries or asking a deer permission to kill it for its meat. Maybe some people would not consider these real prayers to ask permission from a plant or animal, but I consider this type of conversation with nature to be a prayer. Think about the difference it makes in the way we think about plants and animals and the resources around us if we consider their will, their part in the decision-making and their cooperation whether they're going to let us have some. And if we treat them with respect, they'll continue to supply us with what we need. It's a beautiful way of looking at things. A simple prayer may or may not name who you're praying to. A simple prayer asks for the item in a command form. In other words, you'll use the maankano ending or no ending. You could even use the P ending. At least that's what Coyote did with his prayers. Let's go back and look at Roxy Pakanam's prayer for a good morning from a couple of lessons back. Yaham ektakoi nik me uye mankano hesamen kun koro. You'll continue to give me a good morning and a world without troubles. Bebum wep. Yaham ektakoi nik me uya mankano hesamen kun koro. We don't have very many examples of prayers since people tend to be very private about them. In the Tom Young stories, we do have a few examples of Coyote praying for and getting what he wants. When Coyote wanted it to rain, he spoke directly to this world rain. Unin koron karikin, yep, he says. This world's rain, come. 
He uses the word yep, come, to get other items in a different story. Wasapem hesmenim wolom yep. Watam beba. Heradapem tatim beba. Bad looking used burden basket. Come here. A flat basket too. A beat up cradle board too. Those of you who know this story know why he was asking for these things. In another story, Coyote asked for Frost to come up out of the ground. I see Frost from underground seep upwards, he says. He's talking directly to the icy Frost, Eyum Chumilitim. And notice there's no ending on Mikyosipin, seep upwards. It's a command. Notice in all of these, what is being prayed to ends in M. Kadikim, Wolom, Watam, Tatum, Eyum Chumilitim. Now let's listen to a recording Shipley made of Dan Williams saying a simple prayer. Try to figure out who he's praying to. You're going to look for a word that ends in M. Nimble, <laughs> Did you figure out who he's praying to? Could it be Epinim? That ends in M. Wee. Epinim means above, and it's describing the next word, Koyom. Epinim and Koyom go together, the upper valley or meadow, which is a way to say heaven or sky. So that's who he's praying to, sky. Atakum Koroidi. Can you figure out what otakum means? Going on top or being on top. Remember, the ta infix means on top. Otakum koroidi. In the always on top land or world. Wonomaida yapaito yaharon. Esi maikare yapaito yaharon. Wanting to communicate with. Communicate with who? Wonamida. Humans. Now, one thing to know for prayers. If you want to talk about a person, it's always wonamida, not just mida. This term, wonamida, can be a man or it could be a woman. Wonamida distinguishes humans from all the other creatures like birds, animals, and plants, which are also called Maida. Shipley thought Wona Maida meant mortal man, which I think comes from European religious ideas. Mortal means will eventually die. But in Maidu, calling someone a Wona Maida would not be a way to distinguish people from other creatures since all the others will die too. To mean immortal or will eventually die, there would have to be a ma future infix in that word. Wonomapem, maida. Instead, if we go with the die meaning of wono, wonomaida would actually mean dead person. So this is not a good translation of wonomaida. As I mentioned early on in this course, wono seems to have an older meaning of completion. When you die, you complete your life. It came to mean die since people are always trying to use euphemisms or polite words for death to soften it up a bit. To me, wona mida means completed creature. In any case, we translate it as human being and in prayers, this is the way humans are always referred to. Back to our prayer. 
want to mite a paito yaharon. If you want to communicate with humans, kulum, kulum bodhi minki. On your dark, dark road, why wotopin para? May you open up and pour down. Yaharikum, yaharikum. That which makes good or is made good, the best or blessed. Panim sukum sukdawi. Tobacco smoke drifting off. Hilut mankano. You will keenly smell that tobacco smoke. Akum Koromui, it was said to that land. That's my translation anyway, a little different from Shipley's. What is Dan Williams praying for? I think he's praying for rain. He doesn't mention rain, Kadiki, but Roland Dixon states in his book, The Northern Maidu, that Maidu use tobacco in their prayers for rain. Also, when Dan Williams says, Wai woto pimpara, Wai means open up or separate. Woto pin, send down. And he's talking to the sky. So to me, it sounds like he's praying for the sky to open up and send rain pouring down. Praying for rain. Akum, it was said, or it is said. The prayer, that is was said to Kodomui, that mentioned world or land, the one above. In the Mighty Board Game, many of the cards have a prayer you might use to ask for that item. I made these up myself based on what my teacher taught about prayers, but keep in mind I'm not a native speaker. It would be better if we could get these from native speakers. Here are some examples. Repeat each one after me. Prayer to Choke Cherry. Minki doti pemhini nik huye ti maankano. Let me gather your tasty berries. Minki doti pemhini nik huye ti maankano. Prayer to Deer. Meustom nise. Pekuti mankana. By giving yourself, you will feed us. Meustom nise pekuti mankana. Prayer to Willow. Hello, Nick Wibati. Let me snap off a few. Hello, Nick Wibati. Prayer to Jackrabbit. Nikki can be yun pin. Come on into my trap. Nikki can be yun pin. Prayer to Red Tail Hawk. Minky to Tem Yeni, Nick Hesu Paiti. Dress me up with your big feathers. Minki te tem yeni nik hesu paiti. Now we've talked about simple prayers. What about complex prayers? Complex prayers are almost like formal speeches. They're longer and more elegant than simple prayers, and they may ask for more protection for yourself or somebody else. They may be about a life or death situation. These prayers, at least the few examples we have, have certain things in common. One, they name who they're praying to. Often, this is Korom, the land. The one they're praying to ends in M. A complex prayer calls on more than one entity, not just Korom, but also maybe sun, moon, stars, mountains, rivers, the road, etc., to come together and help the person who is praying. Two, the verb kaikas is used a lot, kaikas min. I learned this to mean I tell you, 
But now, since I see this used mostly in prayers, the meaning also seems to be a respectful request or proposal. This type of a request must be very polite, the equivalent of saying please very humbly. Kaikas Min. Three, people are always referred to as humans, wonum minded, as we talked about. The person praying may even refer to himself or herself as unim wonamida, instead of saying I or me. Repeated in every complex prayer I know about is the phrase amadi yahati, make it good there or make it safe there. Notice this is the command form telling somebody to do it. Amadi yahati. Yahatikum is used as an adjective to describe what is hopefully provided. Yahatikum bo, the made safe road, or the safest or best road. You may even choose to translate this as blessed. We just saw this in the Dan Williams prayer. Six, requests. Each prayer asks for something, and the verb ending is usually ma'ankana but it could just be the verb root and any infixes, the simple command form, like yahati, make it good. Seven, sometimes a prayer contains a question. A complex prayer can also include acknowledgments. By this, I mean a statement of gratitude for what has already been provided. For example, the acknowledgement may be, you are watching over me. Although the word thank you is not said in prayers, the acknowledgement conveys gratitude. Also, a prayer might include some background information telling what the situation is. Now we're ready to listen to one of the Herb Young prayers. We, don't, we won't have time to go through it line by line, but listen to it a few times. I have four recordings of prayers by Herb Young, and, the, and I believe they're from the 1960s. They were, were in really bad condition, and even after I had a professional go through and try to clean it up, it's still really hard to understand what Herb Young is saying. Don't expect to be able to understand every word. I sure don't. But try to listen for who is he praying to? This will end in M. In complex prayers, you'll hear that he's calling on more than one entity, maybe asking each of them for the same thing. So it sounds like repetition. The second thing to listen for is what is he asking for? Third, does he have a question in his prayer? Does he ask a question? Four, what does he acknowledge that he's, that's already done for him? Five, what background information does he supply? See if you can listen to this prayer a few times and answer these questions. I will tell you some of the answers at the end of this lesson. Meanwhile, listen to how he uses his voice, how he repeats some things, and how he pauses at just the right moments to make this prayer seem very powerful. This is his trip prayer praying before he goes on a trip. Don't 
Listen to it again before I give you the answers. Okay, here are the answers I came up with. One, who is he praying to? Uning Korom, land, this land. Then, Bom, the road or path. Then, mountain ranges, rivers, trees, peaks. And the moon. Then, what is he asking for? He asks, among different ones, even on not allowed roads, that you will cause me to go on the best or safest road. <laughs> then, Yaham Koro Nik Usito Wo Mankana, you will tell me to cross over the good country. <laughs> road or path while making it good cross over there so I can do it make this land good I respectfully ask you to say I am watching over many I ask you to communicate well. Make it good there. You will be where I will arrive. 
Does Herb Young include a question in his prayer? Yes, he does. His question is, do you talk about what you see there? It sounds like he's asking to know what's up ahead, if there's any danger. What acknowledgments does he tell us? that he's grateful for. You are watching over this journey. You watch over me. In that place while going off, crossing towards these rivers and these mountains and these various rocks, you watch over me. You always watch over us here. These mountain ranges, these rivers, these trees, these mountain peaks, with this blessed sun, these, they came to visit. This moon, this one came to visit. You are watching over me. Does he give some background information? Yes, he does. He, he adds to his prayer why he has to travel that it's for work, that he's working 12 days at a time. Then he goes home, and then he comes back, works another 12 days for two years. Starting off from this workplace of mine, from in this different country. He also seems to be naming several places he'll be passing through. Now, I'm not familiar with any of these. I don't know where they are. Uh, at the time, he lived in Feather Falls, so I don't know if he's talking about uh, traveling from Feather Falls to Mountain Maidu country, or whether he is talking about something more local there near Feather Falls. But one thing I can hear is Hilom Sewi, Ground Squirrel Creek. But then there are a lot of other words I don't know, and I think they might be place names. So listen to that. So that's the end of Lesson 28, and I hope I've been able to give you some insight into Maidu prayers, both the simple everyday prayers and the more powerful complex prayers. I will post a link on our Facebook page for you to download the four Herb Young prayers, which are sort of bad recordings, and see if you can figure out what all he's saying. As Herb Young himself said, there are no set prayers. Each person makes up their own prayers. But you can use his prayers as a model for your own. 
So also today, besides prayers, we learned about repurposing old words to stretch their meanings and continue using them in the modern world. I hope you will go over all the new words and dialogues in Modern Mighty Lesson 7. For homework, I would like you to make up a simple prayer, one of the short ones, to an oak tree asking for acorns. You can direct this prayer to any kind of oak that you might have in mind. The different types of oak trees are in the dictionary and the name of their acorn is the same as the name of the tree. Please send me your prayer by email, Facebook message, or any of those ways I've mentioned in the previous lessons and I will go over it with you. Don't be shy about this. Hell, yahat bispada, chaimen chamakas men.